Hi, this is Martha Hartney with Hartney Law. Today, we are going to have a brief lesson on how to maintain your LLC in Colorado with the Colorado Secretary of State's office. Now, I don't ordinarily maintain my clients' LLCs for them because it would cost you too much to have me do it. And you can do it for yourself very inexpensively and easily. So this video will show you how. The first thing is you may get some official notices about your uh, renewal period approaching. Some of those might be legit coming from the Colorado Secretary of State. Others will look legit or even maybe alarming, um, telling you to write a check to you know the, the company that's reaching out to you for $65 or $85 or $105 or whatever it is they're, they're saying that you need to pay them to file your periodic report. The thing is, you don't need to do that. It's $10. Don't go spending money to some company telling you that you got to spend any more than $10 to do this. So I don't do it for you because I'd have to charge you, you know, like $50. You can do this in about five minutes. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to renew my own company. Okay. So let me just tee that up. Okay. I'm going to share my screen over here. And uh, this is just my starter screen. So I'm going to Google Colorado, whoop, here we are, Colorado Secretary of State Business Search right here, going to business organizations. Now, um, in this little corner here, there is a segment that says search and file, where you can do things like search the database, search for a availability of a name um, in Colorado, um, fi fi file the periodic report. Um, that's the, the report that's required to keep your company in good standing in Colorado. So I'm just going to do he this here. Just so you know, you can search any business in Colorado on this site if you want to find out where they're located and you know who their registered agent is or who own you can't really find out who owns the company through Colorado uh, the, through this website because Colorado does not require a filing company to disclose the owners. In Colorado. That may change in the future, but right now, all they want is a registered agent. Agent. So who's a registered agent? Very likely you are. The registered agent is the person that the company has appointed to receive service of process in the event the company is sued. That's all this whole thing is um, about, is making sure that there's somebody that the Secretary of State can say to a potential litigant, a plaintiff, Oh, you're suing so-and-so? That person's registered agent is right here. This is where you serve process for a lawsuit. And that is in exchange for the, um, the, the ability to do business in Colorado. You need to be able to have somebody for whom service of process can be uh, placed on. Most of the time, it's going to be you. Occasionally, I'll do that for my clients, but only under some pre pretty extreme circumstances. So we will search for Hartney Law over here. All right, so I originally had titled my comp company Hartney Family and Estate Law, and then I just switched it to Hartney Law a couple years later. So um, this is the company that I want, and then we're going to drill down into Hartney Law. Um, it says it's in good standing. Its formation date was, uh, oh my goodness, yeah, it's like 10, 11 years ago now. Um, and then down here, there's a whole bunch of things you can do on this company. Um, here's the filing history and documents, it's trade names, I can get a certificate of good standing or copies of any of the documents, I can file forms, um, set up a secure business filing if I need to, email notification or unsub from an email notification. So let's just look at the filing history and documents. Um, of course, this company is 11 years old, so there's going to be periodic reports for every year. Now, I'm pretty diligent about keeping my company in good standing because I'm a lawyer and I know I'm supposed to do that. All right, so this is um, the first nine. There's two pages of records here. So we're going to go to the next nine because that's where the periodic report uh, notice is located. So right here it says periodic report due, periodic report due by August. Um, I filed my company in um, June, early June of 2010. So I get three months after um, each periodic report is due annually to 
submit it at, without getting dinged with a late charge. Now, Colorado used to not have any late charges and you could file your uh, periodic report anytime it only cost $10, but now if you're late, it costs you $50 to bring it up to speed. So 50 bucks is not a big deal um, for most people. So if you have a company and you haven't renewed it, you should do so because eventually if you don't renew it, the, the Secretary of State will administratively dissolve your, your entity. Okay, so we don't want that. Let's go to return to summary. And we're going to file a form, super easy. Um, these are the types of forms that you can file uh, for your companies. This is the one we're doing today. You can amend your articles of organization. You can restate them. You can amend and restate. You can dissolve your company. If you dissolve your company, you have to make sure that you do that properly and that you don't leave any creditors um, without recourse because uh, your dissolution won't actually work if you leave creditors out there. So you want to make sure to resolve any potential credit creditor issues um, either before or as you are dissolving your company. Um, convert to another form or entity. State a trade name, you know, that's a doing business as a DBA. You can do trade uh, corrections and changes. So we're going to just file this periodic report. Now the uh, view viewing screen that it brings up is what I last filed. Now nothing in my document is really going to change because I haven't moved anywhere. And you all know who I am so I and where I am, so I don't mind you seeing this. So this is my street address for my company. If I had a different mailing address, I'd put it here. Now, who's the registered agent? Well, I am for my company right here. And where do I want that service process to go? If I were going to get sued, I want to go to this office. Um, I could put a different mailing address, but the street address, that's where you want um, your service to process to go. Now, there are some people like if if you have a company in, you know, like Wyoming or another state, you may have hired a registered agent in that state to receive service of process for you. So sometimes you'll have a big business organization name in here. Um, you know, like in Wyoming, I think I use Frontier Registered Agent Services. So I would put their name in there in, in a Wyoming filing. So email notification, I'm gonna put my email notification in here. And then I'm going to uh, check down here. This is the name of the individual causing the document to be delivered. So if I do a filing for a client, I would have my name in here. Um, I, I have my name in here because I'm filing on my own company. So you may have someone else file it for you or you may be filing it yourself. Put that person's name there. That's what that means. Okay. Um, I don't have any other documents that I want to file with this. Very rarely would I want to file any any documents. I definitely don't want to file my article or my uh, shareholder agreement or my operating agreement. There is no need to do that. Um, so I don't suggest it unless there's some reason that you need to do that. Okay, so submit. And now I'm, uh, whoop, enter the filer's address. Oh, I wonder why I didn't pick it up. So here we go, let's submit again. We're not done yet. So I wanna make sure that this file is right. So I'll open this up. It'll give me a document to open in PDF. So I'm gonna move my sharing over there. So you'll see the document in PDF on my screen here. So this is my periodic report for Hartney Law. Um, the address, principal office, just check everything because sometimes it's wrong and you gotta go back and do something on the form. So the registered agent name is me, the registered agent street address is here, the mailing address is here. It, this really doesn't need to be filled out because um, the registered agent address is the primary one, but it's fine because it's um, they're the same address anyways. And then the name of the person causing the document to be filed, that's me, same address. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to move us back over to the browser here and i'm going to say pay now i'm going to pay with a credit card and i'm going to stop my share while i do this so you see my credit card number all right here we go pay now there's a pay now button to click and i'll put in my credit card 
Yeah. Right. CBV, CBC or CBV, whatever you call it. Okay. Now I'm paying. Let me show my screen again so you can see what I'm doing. It's processing my payment. So this is the confirmation screen, screen, and I do want to email myself a receipt for the $10 fee, just to put in my files. Now I'm gonna open the PDF. This now will be stamped. And um, you can see here that the payment and filing and payment were successful. So we're kind of done on this Colorado Secretary of State screen. And now I'm gonna come over to my Acrobat. So you can see that I now have the stamp up here, it wasn't there before. So it was the same document that I downloaded before, but here it's actually official. It has an ID number, it's been renewed. I am good to go. Isn't that easy? Okay, so don't pay anybody else to do this for you. It's ridiculous, just figure it out for yourself. Um, if you need some help, I'll be willing to help you the first time. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, be careful about scammers because whenever there's anything that's in a public record, there are scammers. For instance, um, when I file deeds with the, with the counties to transfer a home from a person's own name into their trust name, that person is almost always going to get a notice that says that they need a, an official copy of their deed and to you know send us a check and we'll you know so that you get that deed, like it, as if it's some mandatory thing. It's totally not. I'll get you any deed in Boulder County for $2.50, $2.50. So don't fall prey to these things and don't let them alarm you. Just investigate, um, reach out to me if you need any help trying to identify something that is a scam versus something that's legit, help me to do that with you. Okay.